This is LGBTQ Nation's Authentic Voices of Pride presented by Chevy and this is a story that hits home for me personally because my family is on the way. It's all about LGBTQ families. I've always known that I wanted to have kids, I loved kids, but I didn't anticipate that it really was that hard. Our dream of being a parent didn't happen until eight long years. All those experiences really taught me to help other people. There are 27 states in the District of Columbia that have laws prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity in the context of an adoption. And so if you're not living in one of those states, then there's no law that protects you. Uh oh, evil law. Right. We can't always adopt or foster easily because there's still states that can actively discriminate against LGBTQ plus people who want to foster and adopt. Texas, where we are, being, being one of those states. Not only were we a lesbian couple, we were a black couple on top of that. Mm -hmm. So that just created another level of complexity. Mama and London twins. Well, yeah, because we were both kind of bold. <laughs> I think one of the defining moments for us is when we called an organization and they said, look, Women who are placing their children for adoption will not select two women. They won't select two women, they won't select you, so, you know, have a nice day. Someone can hate who I was born to be so much that you would allow a child to not have parents. After the devastation in Haiti, we contacted an adoption agency that specifically works with American families to adopt Haitian children. And to know that all of these kids are displaced and just because we were gay, it was better for those kids to be on the street without parents. And I would say that was the hardest moment for me. With every no you get, that pain increases. It's that feeling of I don't belong. Why is my love not enough? Doesn't matter what your job is, who you are, how much money you have, everyone's gonna go through the same process. In my late 30s, that's when I really wanted to start trying to have a family. We worked on it for a good like five years and it just could not work. I mean, we went through so many different egg donors. The 10th egg donor is what worked. I mean, we were pregnant uh, a couple of years ago and lost them at like five and seven weeks um, and we had no embryos left. So we had to start the whole process again and find a different surrogate. That process alone is just so frustrating and emotional because you know, you're know you already imagining everything. And then when that goes, you're like, you feel like there's a death in the family. So we tried it this last time knowing that this would probably be the last that we tried and it worked. It was just, it was meant to be. And now we have twins on the way. I don't think it's really dawned on me yet that I have two coming. I was on the internet, just found, it was like a message board about a birth mom in Cleveland who was pregnant with twin boys and she was going to be due in about five months. We met with her within the first few days of calling the adoption agency. And we quietly flew to Cleveland, Ohio and adopted our, our beautiful boys. And now we are on our way to the attorney's office to complete the process. And pick up our boys. And pick up our boys. Ah! <laughs> We're parents! Grandma's back with you, David. They keep us laughing. Stacy and Chillin'. <laughs> London thinks he's an adult. <laughs> he is a huge reader. What would a perfect seventh birthday look like for you? Nintendo all day until the middle of the night. Duke is really uh, creative, and I would call him kind of the um, the artistic one. What are you gonna do? Play music with our cousins and dance and lights off. Lights off. <laughs> lights off. <laughs> no electronics. No iPads. No nothing. If I had to describe what our journey has brought us to, my life is complete. Go Terrier! Go Terrier! Yeah! All those experiences really taught me that they don't need to be for naught, and I need to use those experiences in order to help other people. I decided that 
it was time for me to make more systemic change. the new CEO of Campus oh, Quality. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're welcoming people on board. Hi. All right, y'all here for Family Week? And you're, and you're coming back next year? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes, love it, love it. Thank you so, mean so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came. We see hundreds of our families, and my boys kept saying, those are two daddies holding hands, those are two mommies holding hands. It's still something that we don't experience in our home states, in our home city, so to come here is very special. What do we see in the water? Sharks. See sharks? Sharks. Sharks. They were whales. whales. As you look around here, you'll see that most of the dad couples have children at a much later age. You need to reach a certain financial status. No one here is having children by accident. These are all well-planned out journeys. Spending time with families who look identical or some very similar to ours is always just so like important to be around, especially when you come from a really small town. One of our primary bills is the John Lewis Every Child Deserves a Family Act. That would prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, religion, and marital status in the context of the child welfare system. You're told so much as a gay person that you're not supposed to have a family. So that was what was in my head for so many years, not thinking that I could actually have my own family. And that has changed. <laughs> We have a responsibility to help other people, to uplift other people. So we're passing that on to our kids and part of our family culture is helping others. And one of the, the questions that we ask the boys, how are you going to change the world? Please consider supporting Family Equality, the organization for LGBTQ families and share a label match or donation up to $25,000.